To date, the extradition of McKinnon to the U.S. has not been enforced. McKinnon allegedly discovered information about the craft within Solar Warden. It is said that there are approximately eight cigar-shaped motherships, each longer than two football fields end to end, and 43 small scout ships. Among the things I found, there was an Excel spreadsheet entitled Non-Terrestrial Officers, which I took to be a space-going fleet made of human personnel, not aliens. It did list their names. I couldn't find them on the internet at the time. There was also a list of ships, and I googled the ship names, and there were no matches. So I knew there weren't ocean-going vessels. The Solar Warden Space Fleet operates under Air Force Space Command. There are at least 300 personnel involved at this facility. Solar Warden is said to be made up of U.S. Aerospace Black Projects contractors, with some contributions of parts and systems by Canada, also United Kingdom, Italy, Austria, Russia, and Australia. It is also said that the program is tested and operated from secret Air Force bases, such as Area 51 in Nevada, USA. Another newer version of the definition and description of Solar Warden is that it isn't the Earth's interstellar space program itself. That is called the SOC. But Solar Warden is in fact the name of a research project that would create sunspots and send the solar waves to directional nodes in space, which in turn aim the solar waves at targets like a rogue asteroid or an alien spacecraft that had flown into our solar system unannounced, without permission, and with hostile intentions. After years of fighting in court for having illegally accessed NASA's computers, the hacker is talking about the findings he has made at the time. McKinnon told the judges and the press that he found evidence of technologies of alien origin, the existence of energy capable of stopping the global warming process, anti-gravity devices, and above all, the existence of a real stellar fleet capable of driving huge distances across cosmic space. Interestingly, some of the names of these ships were people allegedly involved in Majestic 12. If there was a secret space program, and if it has anything to do with back-engineering crashed alien spacecraft, then those MJ-12 people are exactly the ones you would expect to find name-checked in this way. Secrecy associated with MJ-12 in my judgment, has permitted us to spend a huge amount of money, trillions of dollars. My more recent conclusion is that some of the trillions of dollars of money have been used to take the technology we have discovered and build gravity-controlled devices that we would see sometimes as UFOs. So if you look in the sky now, in my opinion, it's 50-50 chance that it's ours versus theirs. Gary McKinnon thinks he has found enough evidence to assert that the Americans have a secret space program run by the Navy, that is, spaceships. According to Metro.co.uk, all the details are reported in an ample interview with Rich Planet TV, known for its UFO programs. We used a program called Land Search to help us access all the tabs and folders. There, we found an Excel file named non-terrestrial officers, the officers from outside the Earth. The file contained names and ranks, and material transfers were specified between ships, and the name of the spacecraft began with the USS. Oh no, they're all like this. That was, I used that one single method to gain entry to the places I got into. Right, and are you allowed to say which other places you got into? Or? Well, I'll say it was, it was the Army, the Navy, and NASA, and the Pentagon. Right, yeah. right. And are they, were they all on separate banks of IP addresses, each of those that you've just mentioned? Oh yeah, yeah, completely separate blocks. Right, so you knew you, whether, you were, whether you were trying to access NASA or Pentagon or Army, Navy, they were all in completely different IP ranges. Yeah, yeah, but right. once you're in there, it can better get a bit confusing because once you start exploring, there's attached networks, other networks, private networks, and in the end, you're not really sure where you are after a while. But... Right. But what evidence would McKenna have found 
alien visits hidden to the public because the space images were altered to the NASA Johnson Space Center. Here, for example, UFOs were taken out of the photographs. I double-clicked on this image, and it was coming down very slowly. But I could see this um, tubular, the classic cigar-shaped UFO. Um, these kind of geodesic domes, like half a golf ball stuck on top and underneath. And um, I'm just amazed, because I've found real evidence of what I thought was a UFO, although it could have been you know, a secret spaceship, who knows. Um, but there it was in front of me, coming down the screen. And then suddenly I saw the mouse move across the screen, right-click the LAN icon and choose disconnect, and lost the chance to fully transfer the photo to my machine. So it was a eureka moment, but also, I, oh, they got me. McKinnon found on NASA's servers a high-definition image of a large cigar-like object floating above the Northern Hemisphere. When he hacked the U.S. Army servers, McKinnon discovered a diary of all non-terrestrial officers, proof that the U.S. Army had a secret battalion in space. Some of the U.S. ships are called USSS LeMay or USSS Hillencoater, USSS coming from the United States spaceship, the U.S. Space Shuttle. McKinnon said, I found a list of officers in the non-terrestrial officer section. This does not mean aliens, but the fact that they are not based on Earth. They were serving a fleet that were not American Navy ships, but spaceships away from our planet. Gary ended up being the first person to uncover tangible proof of these programs through his hacking. Interestingly enough, the information he obtained on the different types of spacecraft, the non-terrestrial officers, fleet-to-fleet -fleet transfers, all of this perfectly coincided with Project Solar Work. On April 13, 2009, the U.S. National Archives of Administration provided nearly 250,000 pages of documents during the Reagan administration, including its personal journal. In this, on 11 June 1985, the president wrote, We have lunch with five top scientists in the field of aerospace. It was fascinating. Space is really the last frontier, and some of the developments there in astronomy are science fiction unless they are real. Learned that our transfer capacity is such that we could put 300 people in orbit. This is curious because Space Shuttle has a maximum of eight people and only five for spaceflight. Even fully loaded, it would be impossible to place and maintain 300 astronauts in orbit. Currently, in the secret space programs, we've been dealing with approximately 60 different non-terrestrial groups that have come here, and some of those groups are interacting with the governments of the world right now. But I would like us to go into those files and hopefully make as much of that public as possible. If there's nothing there, let's tell people there's nothing there. What if, if there something. is something there? Well, if there is something there, unless it's a you know, threat to national security, I think we ought to um, share it with the public. Well, did you look? Did you see? Did you <laughs> explore? I, I, I can't reveal anything. Oh, really? You, did. you know, it's funny. My daughters asked the very same question. They did? Yeah. Would you be allowed to tell your daughters what was in those files? Uh, no. You would not? No. Now that you're out of office, you can do anything you want, right? <laughs> True, yeah. Uh, but I'm not telling you. The, the aliens won't head. let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> you reveal all their secrets. <laughs> they, 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 they exercise strict control over us. Reagan has revealed the existence of a highly classified space program that could host hundreds of astronauts in orbit. With over 50 years of helping injured people, we've seen it all. Know your rights.